Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Crawley. I'm the Partner Account Manager here at Ascari, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to today's webinar, which is being held in conjunction uh, with our friends at uh, Solver. Um, before I uh, go through the agenda and introduce you to today's presenter, um, just a, a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. Um, all delegates are currently on mute, um, but there is the opportunity to ask questions uh, for the end of the session using the chat box um, and question uh, box that's available on the GoToWebinar um, interface. Uh, so if there are any observations or questions, we'll address those towards the end of the session. And so um, today's session uh, is uh, all about uh, Solver and in particular um, focusing on um, Solver's um, product BI360 which is widely regarded as the best reporting and budgeting solution for SAP Business One. And uh, uh, what we'll do uh, shortly is go through um, the agenda, uh, but uh, first I'd just like to introduce uh, my colleague for today, uh, Mandy Rye, who is the UK manager um, for Solver. She'll be uh, running through um, the uh, agenda and giving you um, some uh, much better insight into the, uh, the product BI360 itself and more importantly, what it can do uh, for you as uh, an SAP Business One user. Um, before I, I go through the um, agenda, uh, just really wanted to um, ask the question why we're focusing on uh, Solver BI360 today. Well, put simply, it's because um, with the, uh, the advent of 2020, uh, shortly uh, in the next month or so, um, it's true that many small and medium-sized companies are now looking to modernize their financial reporting and their budgeting processes with, uh, with a view to the, the new decade. Uh, and they're looking principally for a cloud-based solution uh, that has strong formatting and calculation capabilities. And really, it's part of a drive to stop manually exporting data from SAP Business One uh, into Excel, which has, has been the traditional method of, of reporting, and more looking towards um, uh, an automation or an easy to use and repeat uh, cloud solution, which can help automate budgeting process. Um, so Mandy will naturally give you a little bit more insight into all of this, uh, as you can see from the uh, agenda. So uh, without further ado, uh, if I can just transfer uh, the presentation rights to Mandy, I'm sure she'll be able to give you much better insight. Thank you. Over to you, Mandy. Thank you very much, Darren. Um, just bear with me one second while I just um, show my screen. Can you confirm that you can hear me okay? Clear as a bell, Mandy. And, and that can, you can see well. a screen that says Solver Corporate Performance Management. Spot on. Wonderful, perfect. Well, thank you so much for that great introduction, Darren. Um, you've done half my job for me, to be honest. Um, but no, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And a very good morning to everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'd like to take a moment just to thank the team at Ascari for um, organising this session today and for giving me the opportunity to present to you. As Darren mentioned, my name is Mandy Rye and I manage the UK territory for Solver. I'd like to spend um, the next, uh, I think Darren said 20 to 30 minutes, but I'd probably like a little bit longer if possible. Um, showing you our leading corporate performance management solution, BI360, and how we can help you tackle your organization's not just reporting, but financial consolidation and budgeting processes. Um, so in, in, in terms of my presentation today, I'd like to spend a minute or two just telling you about who we are, i.e. Solver, and what we do. Um, we'll then look at some of the challenges that we can solve with our solution. And then sp I'll spend most of the time today just demonstrating um, the, the solution in action 
And finally, we'll just wrap up with a very quick summary. Okay, so Solver is a global organization and we have been established for more than 20 years now. We actually started off with developing a solution called Exile Reporter, which some of um, you SAP users may know or have heard of. And that solution actually, um, when we developed it, developed it, got sold to SAP and they made it available in SAP Business One as a free report writing solution. Currently today, uh, in terms of Solver, we are a leading corporate performance management provider. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when we go into the next slide. But in terms of stats for us, we are a um, organization that has over 140 employees globally with over 3,000 customers. And that rate of customers, new customers, is actually growing massively since, um, since we have launched our cloud product um, two years ago. In terms of our global presence, we have a, about 17 offices, as you can see on the right-hand side over here. But not just only that, our main ethos is to work with partners, partners like Ascari that are experts in SAP Business One. And we have over 150 of these partners all over the world. And we work with them to be able to sell BI360 um, to their customers, i.e. you, um, so that you can actually um, increase the investment that you've made in SAP Business One with a powerful financial reporting and budgeting solution like BI360. So I mentioned that we are a corporate performance management solution provider. Some of you may have may know what corporate performance management is, some of you, some of you may not. So just to highlight in, in very um, brief bullet points. Corporate performance management is financial consolidation, it's budgeting, it's planning, it's forecasting, it's bringing all that together to manage the performance of your business. Um, and that's something that BI360 can do. In today's session, I'm going to, going to try and show you all of the um, capabilities that we have um, and, that, and that meets all of that in, 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 in the next 30 to 40 minutes. Um, but in terms of the slide that I've got up um, showing you here, right now um, is basically a, um, a snippet I've taken from a organization or a platform called G2. Now, if some of you have heard of G2, that's great. For those that haven't, G2 is a user review platform. So um, it's not um, reviews done by a analyst. It's actually user reviews. It's from the users. It's a platform that has over 670,000 reviews and um, over a million buyers that actually access the platform to see and look at the re reviews that users have posted on certain applications. So this grid here that I'm showing you is actually the grid for corporate performance management. And as you can see from the arrow, Solver is quite high up in the leader, leader, leadership quadrant there, um, or, or, the, or, the, or the quadrant of the grid, grid there. Um, and, you know, we are amongst other well-known CPM solution or the globally well-known CPM solutions. Now, um, this just goes back to the slide I had previously where um, it said that we have a 95% customer retention rate. And that truly is correct, because if you have a look at G2, if you have a look at the reviews that our customers have posted, you will see that um, BI360 is easy to it's easy to implement it, um, you know, the usability in terms of the functionality that we have completely meets a lot of the um, requirements that our customers have. So again, I would stress um, for all of you to go have a look at this, because like I said, this is um, reviews posted by users and not um, an, an analysis done by a third party analyst of, from an organization. OK, so let's go straight into some of the challenges that we can tackle and solve with BI360. Now, first and foremost, let's look at the reporting challenges. So a lot of organizations today have are in the scenario above where we've got the, um, the overloaded manager. They have um, data from or sorry, I should say they have multiple data sources. Uh, that, so that could be ERP systems, CRM, payroll, web stats and so forth. And all of those multiple data sources have, of course, their own individual reporting tools. And in order to be able to understand um, and actually, you know, get some real insights from um, all of these multiple data sources, a lot of organizations actually have to export the data out into Excel spreadsheets, 
and then consolidate the data to be able to understand, okay, what's the position of our business based on, you know, the data that we um, data coming from our ERP versus what we've got in the pipeline versus you know the cost of our our headcount or employees, and with BI three hundred and sixty we're able to uh, sort of like take away the the um, Excel juggling shall I say Excel spreadsheet juggling and actually fully automate the process in terms of automating the data loading directly into the BI three hundred and sixty data warehouse. So if you have a look at the bottom half of this slide here, we are able to feed and automatically feed data into the BI360 data warehouse, which would essentially be the one version of the truth. Uh, and that data could be coming from your ERP system, it could be coming from an Excel spreadsheet, a CSV file, from your payroll system. All of that data sits in the BI360 data warehouse. Any financial consolidation that needs to take place, for example, mapping of different chart of, chart of accounts, automating uh, intercompany enumerations, minority ownership, uh, currency translations, all of that can be done in the BI360 data warehouse so that we can have a consolidated report looking at our overall organization as a group, as an individual entity, as an individual department, all of that can be done within BI360. In terms of BI360, it's one database, which is the data warehouse, it's one reporting tool, so regardless of um, what type of user you are, you will access um, BI360 using the web portal, which is something I will show you today. Um, whether you're viewing reports, whether you're creating reports, whether you're entering data into uh, budget forms, all of that is done via one user interface. Okay, so that's the reporting challenges, and some of them do actually align with some of the budgeting challenges that some organizations may be going through. So, again, in terms of the budgeting process, typically, most organize, organizations will be fully or partially using Excel for their budgeting process. So again, manual data loading, loading data into Excel spreadsheets to then be able to create the budget forms, and then manually distributing those templates. So sending out Excel spreadsheets via email to individual departments, individual users, um, who then need to enter in the data. And, and, and with this manual process, there's actually no tracking or ability to really do a automated and smooth workflow process. Workflow in terms of rejecting or um, approving, you know, the data or the assignments that have been submitted. Um, there's, there's, it, it's, it's not a smooth process at all. And in terms of manual, um, in terms of comments and um, line items, for example, that's very manual as well. You know, it's, it's usually emails being sent out with the with the with the template attached to it. And again, forecasting and modeling is completely manual. Now, in terms of BI360, we can automate the whole budgeting process from start to finish. So that's automating the um, data loading, as you saw in the previous slide, we can pull data from many, any data source into the BI360 data warehouse. We can have parameter driven models. So again, we can create um, templates that are published through the BI360 portal, where then end users or budget contributors, as I will call them throughout this session today, can log into the portal and enter in the, their budgets, and they're entering it in using a web portal, so it's web-based data entry. The whole budget workflow is smooth because uh, we have a two-level approval process. So the whole process can have a reviewer and an approver, someone who can reject or approve the information that has been um, entered into these budget templates. We have built-in comment and line items, so you can leave comments that can then get attached to that specific template or assignment, shall I say. And of course, we have dynamic forecasting and modeling. Now, as you can appreciate, that's uh, a lot of information for you today, and I, I will try to show you as much of it as I can during the course of this session. But before we go into the demonstration, I just wanted to show you a larger view of this, um, or a larger slide of this of, of our architecture in terms of BI360. So I mentioned that we can automate and um, load data from any data source, and that is true, we can. However, when, it, when we're looking at SAP Business One, uh, whether that's SQL or HANA, we actually have pre-built integrations. So we have built a connector 
to SAP Business One, where we can push data directly from your database into BI360. Now, um, and that's then gets stored into the BI360 data warehouse, where we can perform, like I said, financial consolidation, whether that's uh, mapping different chart of accounts because you have different companies within um, SAP Business One, whether that's converting currency conversion, uh, whether that's um, intercompany and automating your intercompany eliminations, minority, um, multiple currency handling, um, IFRS adjustments, uh, US GAAP adjustments, and so forth. All of that can be performed in BI360 using the BI360 data warehouse. And then from there, you can, of course, create consolidated PNR reports. And in terms of how you create those reports, we have a third generation Excel add-in, uh, which uh, if I have time to show you today, I, I will try to at the end. Um, if I don't, I'm more than happy to set up a separate session with individuals on that. Um, but the Excel add-in has full Excel functionality in terms of grouping, uh, charting capability, as well as leveraging the powers of BI360. We then have the BI360 budgeting module, which is via the web portal. Um, and that enables end users um, or budget contributors to go in and enter uh, budget data into budget forms that then get stored against the data warehouse. And once they're in the data warehouse, of course, we can create PL reports, which is, or financial reports, shall I say, which are looking at not just the actuals coming from SAP Business One, but also actuals versus the budget data that's been entered versus forecast data that could be entered as well. And we can have multiple different scenarios in terms of budgeting um, and forecasting. And finally, um, in terms of the wider organization, if you have hundreds or thousands of users that will need to have access to some of the data within BI360, uh, another method or, um, yeah, sorry, another method of distributing um, reports could be um, via dashboards. So with BI360, we can integrate with um, any third party dashboarding solution of your choice whether that's Power BI, Click, Tableau, or any of the others out there, we can actually push all the data from the BI360 data warehouse into your preferred dashboarding solution. And last but not least, BI360 is available on cloud, and that's the version I will show you today. However, if you are interested in an on-premise deployment, we can also accommodate for that. Okay, so with all that said, let's go straight into a product demonstration. Okay, so this is my BI360 cloud demo environment. I've logged in as a power user, somebody that can administer the whole BI360 portal and environment, as well as, um, you know, create reports, um, assign users, um, control the whole, the whole portal in terms of BI360. Now, in terms of BI360 cloud, um, we would host and maintain the platform for you. We host it on Microsoft Azure, and we have a number of data centers um, throughout the globe. So there's one, uh, there's two in, in America. There's a European data center, um, which is in Dublin. And then we have one in Africa and Australia and so on. Um, sorry, sorry, and we are adding a few other in terms of Latin America and so forth um, in, in, by the end of this year. In terms of BI360 on-premise, um, of course, you can take the BI360 environment and install it on your own internal servers or onto your own private cloud. So they're the two options in terms of deployment. As I mentioned, today I'm showing you BI360 cloud. And this is my demo environment, so apologies um, that I do have access to everything. However, I will be only showing you today the data warehouse live reporting, budgeting, workflow, and archive. I will not show you how to administer the portal in terms of user settings and um, more deeper diving into the data warehouse. Before I move into the data warehouse, which is the first piece, I'm just gonna highlight a few of the functionality that we have here. Notifications, so if I have any new assignments or reports that have been sent to me, um, this notification banner will pop up and let, let me know of those. 
if I want email sent to me uh, in terms of, okay, Mandy, you have a new report or you have a new budget assignment that you need to contribute to, I can have those emails sent to me as well. In terms of BO360 Cloud, you can leave feedback and that feedback goes directly to our product development team. And throughout the whole application or solution, shall I say, we have an online help menu option. So if you need to understand the naming conventions or just need a little bit of more guidance around some of the uh, functionality that we have, you can of course use the online help option. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go straight into the data warehouse. Because the first thing that we need to do is pull through or bring through data from your data source. And typically the main data source will be the ERP system. So if I go into integrations, I mentioned earlier that we can connect to any data source and that is true, we can. Uh, we have pre-built integrations to SAP Business One as well as other systems. However, if we don't have a pre-built integration, not to worry, we have the ability to connect to any SQL database using our SQL connector. We have the ability to connect to any on-premise database using something that we've created, which is called a gateway connector. It's like a, an, a VPN access to your internal servers. And from there, we can create SQL views and, and load the data into the BI360 data warehouse. And that's using BI360 Cloud. Of course, um, if we don't have a connector uh, or we can't somehow connect to your data source, um, you can, of course, as long as uh, you can, of course, upload data using CSV files. So if your data source can ex export data into a file, we can upload that into the BI360 data warehouse. So that should cover us in terms of any data source that is out there. Um, and we can load that data in using any of those methods. And I'd be more than happy to discuss those in more detail um, post this session. However, for today's example, I'm just going to concentrate on my sample file import here. So my sample file import is actually a CSV file, as you can see from the source here. And um, what I've got in my CSV file is data that I'm pushing through into the BI360 data warehouse. Now, if you were to implement BI360, of course, we will set this up for you. So any integrations that you wish to have as part of your implementation of BI360, we at Solver will have this set for you. So do not worry that this is what you have to do yourself. You do not. Uh, we will do this as part of the implementation process. But once we've set up the integration, you will see it listed here. So I can see my sample file import listed. Now, what I can do is I can make sure that any new transactions are updated on a regular basis. So with BI360, I have the ability to create a job and schedule events to run. So I've got one here called test. It's basically making sure that my sample file import is updated on a daily basis. So I can ensure that every day at three o'clock, um, this integration runs so that any new transactions that were posted in the ERP system or in my, in my integration here are posted in the BI360 data warehouse. So that every single day I have uh, the most recent information in terms of new transactions. Now I've got this set up for three o'clock um, on a daily basis. It runs every day. I can specify if I want this to run every weekday, if I don't want Saturday and Sunday included, and I've got this repeated indefinitely. I can have email notifications sent to IT or the finance team to advise if the integration failed and or advise if the integration was successful. Now, that's how we can run this on a daily basis. Of course, you can have this run, run um, twice a day, three times a day. You saw that you can specify the time um, over here and you can, of course, have as many jobs, multiple jobs set up. Now, I have that integration running at three o'clock every day. However, I'm, I'm now in BI360 at 11.25 today, and I'd like to be able to upload any new transactions from this morning. I can do on-demand runs as well, updates as well, just by clicking on the integration, clicking the run button here, and now that's updating as per right now, so 11.25. So any new transactions uh, from this morning will be posted into BI360 Data Warehouse. So that's how we would um, manage the integration going forward, and, and that's how you would maintain it going forward as well. The next step is really to look more into the consolidation, and I won't take too 
uh, too long uh, looking at this. But I mentioned in my presentation that BI360, uh, we can tackle and complete your financial consolidation process. So some of those typically could be currency translations, where we want to be able to translate uh, transactions from one currency to a base currency based off defined monthly rate values. It could be copy versions where we want to copy the data from one year to another. It could be that we want to automate the, our intercompany elimination tra transactions. All of that can be done in BI360. I'm going to show you one here where actually I'm going to run this on demand. So I've selected my intercompany elimination transaction here. I'm just going to click run. It's now asking me the scenario. So the scenario is going to be for my actuals. It's then asking me what category this is for. And I've got a category here. And this ca category is important because what will happen is when we look at the reports, we'll be able to drill down to look at these different transactions that have been translated using the BI360 data warehouse. So for this example, I'm just going to select my in intercompany main transactions uh, category there. And then I just need to select what organizational uh, tree roll up I want this to be applicable for, if it's for a specific period or not, I'm just going to select all of them and click run. And now this is running my intercompany elimination transactions on demand because I've selected this. As I mentioned, we can automate this. We can automate it by adding it as a second step within the uh, job scheduler here. So we can have step one, it runs our integration. Step two, it automatically runs any of our uh, rules. So this one, for my example here, I've got my intercompany elimination transactions. So we can automate the full process. In terms of financial consolidation as well, we have the ability to handle multiple currencies. So again, within BI360, we have the ability to have uh, different rate types. So those rate types could be a closing, actual, uh, and so on. And those different rate types could be applied to different um, accounts. So, for example, our intercompany, sorry, our income statement account will look at an average rate when we're looking at our actuals, whereas our balance sheet will look at a closing rate when looking at. We can have a look at the monthly rates that are being applied in terms of the exchange rate. So, if I click on the monthly rates here and I click on average. I'm able to see the different rates that we're using for the different currencies that we are handling. You can see that my demo environment is actually consolidating to a USD, it's US dollars, um, but I'm, I, I trade in um, or handle euros, uh, Canadian dollars and Hong Kong dollars, and these are the different rates that are being used. And of course, I can maintain these rates using the BI360 portal here by you know, changing these if I wanted to. These rates aren't something that BI360 would automatically provide you. It's something that the organization will need to provide us. It could be in an Excel file uh, or a third party source, and we can integrate that into BI360 so that they're automatically loaded in. And of course, we can have multiple different rates there as well. Now, in terms of everything to do with the financial consolidation piece, of course, once we're automating everything, you can have validation reports to ensure that all the data that, has, that is being processed in BI360 is, 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 is correct, it's coming through correctly, and you can create those validation reports in BI360. If I have some time, I will definitely try and show you one or two of those examples. But before I do, there's a last piece that I wanted to show you on the financial consolidation, and that is the organizational, the consolidation trees, the organizational tree roll-up. So in this screen here, I've actually um, showing you an overview of my BI360 data warehouse. These blue boxes are my modules. Hopefully you will be familiar with general, general ledger, general ledger detail. But if I um, focus in on some of these over here, I've got my module here, which is actually my Google Analytics data source. I have a module here called payroll, which is data coming from a payroll system. Um, I've got one here, travel, which is data coming from my travel system. So this is where I can actually really bring in data from multiple different data sources and consolidate that so we can create uh, reports that is looking at general ledger, looking at information in, and in the same report that's looking at uh, payroll information and travel information, for example. 
So this would be an overview of your uh, data warehouse. You can, of course, go into one of these modules, click uh, or select one of the dimensions, for example, count here. And over here, I'll be able to see my chart of accounts and the data and the fields that I'm bringing through from my general ledger. Um, I can go in and, and select any of the fields here. I'm just gonna go into entity for this example. Um, because I have multiple entities within my database or within my organization. So I can see those different entities here. I've got corporate US, EMEA, Canada, Asia. Um, then I have sort of like regional entities, so Western Hemisphere, Asian region, and so on. The next thing I'm going to do is actually show you the consolidation trees that I was mentioning earlier. So I'm going to click select trees. And I'm just going to open up and show you um, some of the trees that I have in my demo environment. Now, for changes in minority ownership, and organization, organizational roll-up, trees can be easily copied from one period to, to the next, so that historical data can be rolled up with its correct tree for the related period. And you can see that example here. I've got um, different trees for different periods, which obviously will apply when I'm looking at financial reports for period 01, 2016, it will apply this correct tree. Now, I'm not gonna focus in on any of these trees here. I'm just gonna go straight into my line of business tree. I'm going to show you how this um, organizational roll-up has been structured. I have my group here, which is my top level. I then have another level down, which is actually my line of business, which is looking at a manufacturing region and also my distribution, which is my second level. And within manufacturing, I have my individual entities. So within the manufacturing region, I have corporate Asia, corporate Canada, corporate US. And then within distribution, I have corporate EMEA. If I look at these entities, I can have a look at the node properties here. I can see the account, uh, sorry, dimension codes, the dimension description and percentage ownership for that particular region here. So I can see, for example, if I go back into my group roll up, that uh, my group here has uh, manufacturing and distribution within corporate EMEA. Uh, sorry, within distribution, I have corporate EMEA. Within, corporate U, uh, within manufacturing, I have corporate US, Canada and Asia. Now, it could be that actually US is, um, is part of distribution, and I can change that if I wish to, so I'll just make that over here. Or it could be that actually corporate US is split between manufacturing and distribution, and I can just change the percent ownership here and just copy and make sure that we have a corporate US up in the manufacturing region. Of course, you can maintain all of that going forward uh, and create that. It's really nice and easy, no coding involved. I, I'm literally just grabbing the entity from here clicking this button and, and assigning it to the correct level or the, to the correct structure I wish to see in my organization. Now, I'm gonna leave this as here. I've changed corporate US from manufacturing into distribution. I'm just gonna save this and show you the changes straight away. So I'm gonna move away from the data warehouse for now, and we're gonna go straight into the live reporting aspect to see some typical consolidated reports that we can view. So I've just gone into live reporting. This is my reporting library within BI 360. So I have a number of example reports in my demo environment. We don't have time to go through all of these today. However, if you have a specific example that you would like to see, again, more than happy to arrange a separate session to do this. However, um, what I'd like to be able to do is show you some of the consolidation reports. So again, I have some categories here. So all of the reports that I have, I can assign them to categories. And these categories can be assigned to uh, specific user groups. So it could be, you know, this category will go to my senior management user group, um, whereas these categories, for example, financial report will just go to my um, to my head of departments, for example. However, let's go into look look straight into a consolidated report. I'm just going to open up this one here. Um, it's called we've called it. It's a PNL report. It's consolidated multi tab with the tree. Now, before I show you um, what this report is based on, let's look at the parameters that we have here. First and foremost, this report, I can select a different period if I wish to. So I have the ability to select uh, another period if I want. So I'm gonna select 02 period 2016. I can select my scenario in terms of whether I want to see my actuals budget, um, budget year two. So we can have uh, multiple scenarios when we're looking at our budgeting and forecasting process. Uh, and those scenarios can be um, visible in any report that we create. I'm just gonna leave it as budget for now. And then here we have um, the tree. So we've got the line of business tree there. I have the levels that I, I wanted to see. So I've got my consolidated tree. I've got my manufacturing and distribution. Um, 
And what we'll do is we'll now run this to make sure that it updates and refreshed, refreshes with the changes that I made. So I'm just going to run this because all I did was open, open it up and it opens it up from the last view that I saw. But as soon as I click run, it's now accessing the most recent information from the data warehouse for this specific period. And also it will uh, capture the most recent changes to the organizational tree roll-up. Okay, so now let's expand this report and have a look into more of it. So it's a PNR report. It's a multi-tab report. So I can see this view at the moment is a consolidated view of my whole group. I've, um, I'm looking at product revenue, I'm looking at actuals, I'm bringing through budget information and the variance. If I scroll down slightly, I can see departmental expenses, I can see salary and benefits for each department, so administration, sales and marketing, HR. We're using um, Excel grouping capability here because I can expand and cascade the, the particular line items here. And within BI360, we always will have the ability to drill down as well. So at the moment, I'm looking at consolidated um, view of the group. If I look at the next tab, I'm now looking at consolidated view of my manufacturing region. Um, and I can see the information here uh, in terms of the P&L and then each individual entity. When I'm looking at each, in, each individual entity, I mentioned that we have the ability to drill down when we're looking at our actuals and we can drill down. So if I drill down now, it opens it up into a separate tab and I can see individual transactions. So I've got a transactional ID, I can see the currency, um, I can see what entity it's specific for, what it was, the, um, whether it was USD converted, which department it was from, and so on. So throughout the whole of BI360, regardless of what report you're looking at, you will always have the drill down capability. So you can actually look at the transactions that are pulling through. If there are any transactions that have been converted in BI360, they will of course have a different category um, listed over here. So these are USD converted transactions that we are viewing. So this report here is a consolidated report. Quite simply, this could be sent out to a multiple, uh, to a number of users. It could be sent out to the group um, management, senior management. It could be sent out to regional management. It could be sent out to head of departments. Now, if I, Mandy, was a consumer of this report, however, my permissions in BI360 only allowed me to see my entity, which is corporate EMEA, I could be sent this report. I wouldn't be able to see any of this information other than what's available in corporate EMEA if that's how my permissions were set. So you can really um, set up security and permissions to make sure that individual users aren't seeing data that they shouldn't be seeing. Another example consolidated report that I'll, um, I'll show you very quickly is uh, another view of looking at that. So this was a multi-tab that we were looking at, but it could be that we want to be able to see um, our entities as a column. And that's again, absolutely fine. We have an example here where we're looking at our balance sheet report. Uh, we're looking at all the different entities as columns, and then we have a consolidated view here as well. So we're looking at um, the balance sheet. So we've got assets, total assets, liabilities, and so on. And again, like I mentioned in BI360, we still have the drill down capability as well. And again, we have a little bit more of a description here um, in terms of some of the transactions that are going through. Okay, so that's enough with the consolidated reporting um, and the consolidation piece. Let's now swiftly move on to the budgeting capability. Because what I've shown you with this consolidation is actually features within the reporting element itself. Okay, so straight on to uh, budgeting then. So again, powerful budgeting process, uh, we can, sorry, um, automate your whole budgeting processes, but a process currently to date um, through BI360. What I'm going to do is just show you an example of the different um, scenarios that you may have in your organization. And again, I'm going to keep this very brief due to time uh, because there's so much to cover and there's so much to show you. But first and foremost, um, again, we have our budget library here or budgeting library here. These are the budget forms that I have in my demo environment. And again, these are just examples. However, with budgeting, we do actually have something called budget workflow, which I will show you. But before I show you this, I'm just going to show you some how these um, templates are built and how you can enter data and so forth into these templates. So first and foremost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this one um, called assumptions, because what you can do with BI360 budgeting is 
For example, let's go back into the financial consolidation process. When you're um, automating your intercompany eliminations um, through BI 360 and you're pulling up a validation report to make sure that everything, your TB is balancing out, if it's not balancing out and you need to adjust the trial, uh, make any adjustments, you can actually use the BI 360 budgeting um, module here because the budgeting module is basically, it just allows you to enter data into BI 360 portal. And you could create a, um, a journal entry uh, ad adjusting form, which I have here. So I've got one here called adjusting journal entry. It could be, um, and you can create that adjustment that then gets stored into the BI360 uh, data warehouse. And of course, when you rerun that um, validation report, post adjusting the journal entry within BI360, it should balance out. So again, just think of BI360 budgeting, not just completely for your budgeting process, but it allows you to do any financial consolidation adjustments as well. Okay, back into the mode um, of the budgeting process. This is an example of typically what organizations will go through um, when they're looking at uh, their entire budgeting um, process. Sometimes the first, first part of the process is to ensure that we have um, received our strategy goals and assumptions from um, senior managers before we actually start entering in our budget information. Now, the example I have here is an assumption form for our payroll budgeting. As you can see, we've got payroll taxes. This is the account code, and this is the rate that we are assuming for our budgeting process. We have benefits, and again, the account and the assumption that the monthly amount for benefits will be 500 for uh, our budgeting process and so on. Now, what I'm going to do is this could be something that the HR director or the HR manager needs to enter in before we actually send out any budget forms or templates to our departmental heads, for example. Now, I'm going to show you this um, live, and I'm actually going to change this speaker rate from 0.6 to 10%. And I'm actually going to change this benefit from 500 to 1,000 just to show you the process of how this automatically changes. Now, I've made those changes, and what I need to do is save this data so that now this gets stored in the BI360 data warehouse. And the next thing I'm going to do is pull up a form a payroll form and pull up this payroll budgeting form here. So now the HR director or the HR manager has entered in their assumptions. The next step is for now the uh, departmental head to go in and start budgeting for their headcount. And this is an example here where uh, we are looking at uh, corporate US as the entity that we will, we will be entering in this budget for. We are looking at a specific department, which is the sales and marketing department. And then um, we are um, just looking at certain versions and um, actual data pulling through for um, certain periods as well. Now, um, if I had made any changes, I can click run to make sure that that refreshes and I will click run. And the next thing that the departmental head can do is start budgeting for any new headcount. OK, so here I can see my full time employees. I have my part time employees. I have a number of uh, fields or um, measures here that I need to I need to start entering data in for you, the yellow cells. And over here on the right hand side, um, I've got some information populating as well. So what I'm going to do is add a new salesperson. I'm going to add a new account manager and I'm going to start populating this budget form. The higher month for this. Um, New account manager for next fi um, financial year is going to be March, and then their end month in terms of the budgeting end month will be December. They will be a full time employee, therefore, would they will, their annual hours will be the same with the rest, and, and their salary will be 50,000. Now, as soon as I've started to enter in the salary, you will have noticed that the salary over here has, on a monthly basis, has started to be calculated. 
what I'll now do is if I wanted to give them an increase, I can do, and that increase can be added. I'll now say yes to benefits and scroll over to the right to show you how automatically, as I, as the department, departmental manager has been entering in this data, I can see that the total compensation has been um, specified on a monthly ba basis. I've got total income. And before we move any for, um, further, remember I changed that FICA rate to six from a 6% to 10%, that change has been made straight away. If I scroll over more over to the right, well, I should be able to see my benefits as well. So I can see the cost of a individual employee on a monthly basis for both, uh, for all of these um, calculations and factors here. So FICA, FUTA, taxable income and so forth. And then this form is also showing me the monthly budget I need for my full-time salaries, for my part-time salaries. Um, I can see what the yearly budget should be. Um, and again, what my budget, what my forecast is and the variance. So this is just an example of a form. All of these forms and reports that I've shown you today can be fully customizable um, to accommodate your needs and requirements. We use a third part, a third generation Excel add-in, so full Excel capability is available. Now I can save this data. This data now gets saved into the BI360 data warehouse. And of course, any report that is looking at uh, payroll for this particular entity, for this particular department, will see this new account manager in those reports. I'm just gonna quickly move on to the workflow. So again, the workflow is the ability to manage and control the whole budgeting process. So I spoke earlier about having the ability to set up a workflow that gets sent out to senior management that needs to highlight to us uh, for the next budget year what the corporate strategy and goals are, what the assumptions are. Those assumptions, those goals can then feed into departmental uh, manager budgets, you know, and, and budget manager and so forth. So information that gets fed into this workflow can be populated into workflow two, workflow three, and so on. So we can have them linking so that um, any information that's populated from one is then um, populated into another. As a um, power user, I am able to create new workflows, but I'm also able to see the visibility of how uh, we are progressing through our budgeting process. So if I go into view here, um, I can see the individual users, the templates that they have been assigned. And if I go back one step, I should have gone to show you status because that actually gives me a status update. It shows me who's in progress, who's completed what template and so on. So if anyone do, hasn't started, I can just, you know, um, give them a, a friendly reminder that they need to start this because it needs to be done by a certain date. Now, if I go back in here, I have actually created some examples for today. I'm just going to go in and edit and just um, show you very quickly, uh, and sorry, talk you through this very quickly. So I've given my workflow a name, I've called it demo. I've given it a start and end date, so it ends um, at this month. And then um, I mentioned very, very early on in our presentation that we have a two level approval process. So we can have a, re a reviewer, somebody that reviews the budget, and then we have a approver, somebody that will approve or reject the budget. I'm gonna bypass the reviewer and just go straight to approver, and I will be the approver in this scenario. The next step would be to select the templates, the budget templates that will be applicable for this workflow. So where, where do we need the, which templates do we need the data entered into? I can select those here, which I have done. I've got three here. And the next step is to select my users. So I've got Johnny and Lisa, a part of this workflow. They have other expenses um, and some P&L um, budget templates that they need to enter into. Johnny will be entering data into all three templates, whereas Lisa will be only entering data into two. And I can obviously select, um, select or deselect the ones that are, are applicable. I'm then going to save my workflow. And then once I'm happy and ready, I can publish this workflow now. Now this has now been published, which means that Johnny and Lisa should get their assignments. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log in as Johnny, which I have done. I've got a separate browser set up. This is Johnny here. Here's my notifications. Hey, I've got a new assignment. Great. What I'm going to do now 
as you can see, Johnny's view is slightly different to Mandy's view uh, because Johnny is just a budget contributor. So Johnny can now go into his assignments. He can see his assignments here. Um, and I'm just going to open one up here. There's his three assignments. They're new. He hasn't started them. So let's get a start on them. I'm going to open up other expenses. Johnny isn't able to select any of these parameters here because that was predefined for him. However, as part of the workflow process, if I just scroll back to my um, view here, I can allow Johnny to make his own selection if I wish to. All I needed to do over here was just let the user decide all of these parameters rather than pre-selecting them for him. So Johnny can start entering in budget data. He can, um, in this form here, I'm looking at other expenses. These yellow fields are where I need to enter in data. On the right hand side, I am pulling through date, actual data as well as forecast data as well for a specific period. Now, Johnny can, um, if he wishes to, you know, copy and paste here, he can use Excel formula because we're rendering Excel here. So there you go, I've copied and pasted. I can use Excel formula. So I can say equals um, that times 1.1, for example. But really, most importantly, BI360 has the ability to spread and or add new line items. So I'm just going to go into this blank line item here called special events. What I can do is actually use the spreading mechanism within BI360 where I can distribute um, and specify what my budget is. So I'm going to say for special events, my budget for the year 2023 is going to be 20,000. Now, I have a dist different distribution rules that I can set up as an organization. Available to me right now is even. It's um, an example where I've actually created a distribution where I'm applying a 10% um, distribution for every single month up until August and the 5% across. I'm going to keep it nice and simple and just said, I, wa I want to spread this evenly. I'm going to click spread. And now that 20,000 should be spreaded evenly. I'm going to go to um, another one called uh, audit and accounting. And this time what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you the line item detail. So we have the ability to enter in new line items that are not available in the nominal ledger or uh, the chart of accounts. So it could be that, for example, and this is a very basic example, um, my audit and accounting. It could be that within corporate US, we're going to be opening a new office in 2023. Uh, of course, we we haven't opened it yet. It's not going to. It's not. Uh, uh, you know, it's not a part of our um, chart of accounts or anything like that. It's not in our ERP system. However, we need to budget because there's going to be some sort of audit and accounting costs associated to that. So we can say NY office, uh, and we can include the NY office as part of the budgeting process for 2023 and ensure that the costs associated with it are included. And there we have it. We can have that. And if we are opening another office, maybe in um, Miami, oh, these are exotic locations. But essentially, if we we're going to open a new office in Miami 2023 in August, uh, we can, of course, budget for Miami as well. OK, so once Johnny has um, entered in the information uh, into this assignment, he can um, save the data. Um, and then complete assignment. I'm just going to save the data for now. Before I complete assignment, I'm just going to show you this activity log. Johnny can actually have a social media type of conversation with his approver. So he can say, added budget for NY office. And this note or conversation will go to his, his approver when they go to review. So I've added this comment, comment in. I'm going to complete this assignment now so that when I look at Johnny's assignments, this has now been sent off for approval. Next step, I'm just going to go away and leave Johnny for now. And I'm going to log in uh, back in as myself here. I've already got the notification to say to me, I've got an assignment waiting, waiting for approval. And remember, any of these notifications, I can have an email sent to me as well to, to prompt me to go into BI360 to approve um, any assignments that have been sent or, or, or need approval. Now, I need to go into my assignments. I can see um, you know, completed work, single assignments, and the workflows that we have. If I open this one here, I have this one that needs to be approved. And I can see it's other expenses. It's the one that Johnny sent in. 
if I look at the activity log, I can see the activity uh, log, uh, a social media type of conversation he sent me. I can see the data and the information that he sent. If I want to reject, I can reject. If I want to mark as approval, I can mark as approved. I'm going to leave this marked as approved for now. And that's the two level approval process um, that we can have within the budgeting process for your organization. Now, with three minutes to go before the hour is finished, um, I just want to highlight to you something called archive. Archive is the ability to um, archive any financial and or budget reports and create uh, what we would say, what we call is a presentation layer. So I'm just going to open this one up very quickly before I finish off and just show you this playlist. So I can essentially use BI360 and use this archive feature as a presentation layer. So rather than exporting BI360 reports out into PowerPoint or into Excel, I can actually use this um, as, a, uh, as a replacement of PowerPoint if I wanted to, where I'm actually using live BI360 reports um, and showing them to in a meeting with my team, with my peers, with the senior management and so on. And all these individual tabs here at the bo bottom um, or pop up window, shall I say, are BI360 reports that are a part of this presentation. Or this playlist, as we call it. And of course, within BI360, when we're using the web portal, we have the ability to drill down. So if I am in the meeting and someone Someone had a question about, um, you know, the PNL and the specific line item there, and they want to query. We can go straight into the drill down capability and look at the main transactions and the transactions underlying behind those, uh, behind that figure, rather than saying, okay, I'll come back to you in one or two weeks' time. And again, at the end, we then just have a uh, a a workbook, uh, like a report package of all of those individual reports here. So. That's a lot to show you today, and I apologize, I've had to speed through it, um, but I just wanted to show you the, some of the capability that we have in BI360. Um, if any of this is on if interest, please do reach out. Um, I'm just gonna finalize with um, a the PowerPoint slide and just highlight to you some of the um, features in terms of how do you learn BI360? Well, I've shown you a lot of functionality today, although it has been at high level. But in terms of learning BI360, we use a third generation XR add-in to create reports, to create uh, budget templates. So as long as you have Excel knowledge, you will learn BI360 very, very quickly. Outside of that, we actually have uh, Solver Academy, which is an e-learning portal. It's uh, available 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. It has over 400 hours worth of content. So if you are interested in um, self-study guides, learning at your own pace, taking the journey of being a beginner user to an advanced user, understanding a little bit more about your specific integration for SAP Business One, or um, how to uh, administer the data warehouse, all of that is available um, using the Solver Academy, which is a subscription-based um, product. And finally, with all that said, thank you so much for listening to me for the last hour. Um, if you have any questions or are interested in a personalized demonstration of BI360, then please do feel free to reach out to me at mrai at solverukco.uk or you can contact Darren um, at Aspari directly and he can uh, coordinate a session where we can dive deeper into your specific requirements. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, Mandy. Some great insight there. I'd just like to thank everybody who attended today's event. Uh, just a very brief uh, reminder, um, a video will be made available of uh, the demonstration and presentation from Mandy today. Uh, so if there are any colleagues or any associates that you wish to um, uh, pass that information on to, we'll make that available shortly. Thank you.